Hey NIMFAM, welcome back. In a week where we were done over not only by PEP, but the official FPL website crashing yet again. And I was caught up in the crossfire for a second game week running. With even Andy Murray commenting on how bad things are, I think it's time for change now. Please, deadline kickoff absolutely needed. If you're loving the content, then please do smash a like on it. Let's try hit 60 likes in this video. It means an awful lot to me. Do pop me a comment below. Were you affected yet? again by the crash thank you all so much for getting me 6k on the channel it's absolutely amazing i'm going to need a new target now though so stick a comment below and let me know what we should go for next but thank you all so much for the support that you give to the channel it means so much to me okay let's see how i got on in game week 15 before we look ahead to our last game week before the world cup game week 16 okay let's get into this Let's start by saying this team is not necessarily what I had planned this week for my video last week. As you'll see, it's not good, guys. I'm feeling really bruised today. I'm trying to stay positive. It's a brand new game week. Lots can happen. So, you know, I'm trying to kind of get my head back in the game. But it's been brutal on me the last two game weeks. I'm not going to lie. I had no idea my transfers had actually gone through when the site crashed. And I had no way of changing my captain. Despite trying for some time with how an hour to go on the website nothing happened then I moved over to the app and then something seemed to happen but I wasn't sure if anything had actually confirmed and yeah I just didn't know really who I had in my team come the deadline so it's a bit of a shock to see this team staring back at me when the game had actually updated. Pickford couldn't manage a clean sheet this week to be honest he's been brilliant for me recently so I can't really moan at that. I didn't think he would but I'll take the two extra points from his six saves an absolute hero to get me an extra point in a week where I really really needed it. In defence Trippier did the business yet again with a clean sheet and an assist for 12 beautiful points. I have genuinely loved owning this guy. Let's hope his hamstring holds up for one more game week and then he can get a bit of a rest potentially over the World Cup and come back good and strong for us. Castagna my man since game week 12 I've had three clean sheets from him. I benched him the week he blanked honestly so happy with him and Cancelo well what a week to get a red card for us absolute nightmare he'll play next game week though so don't get rid of him he serves his ban in the cup so all is good that is unless Pep decides to put him on the naughty step for being a bad boy we all know about Pep roulette recently don't we in midfield Zaha ended up staying in my team this week this was less about the crash and more about my need for a city midfielder when Foden was benched I could only get KD be if I sold Salah and with Foden benched Zaha survived. Oh, am I glad he stayed one way or another because the goal and the assist was sorely needed for 12 points. He's probably done just enough for Forrest where he'll probably troll me again. I'll think yeah you know Forrest great fixture keep Zaha and then we all know what's coming. The City saga was again horrific like absolutely horrific. I haven't been this stressed over FPL since like my third season of playing it. Between the leaks and the site crashes, it, uh, it was just horrible. I've always left my transfers until 20 to 30 minutes before the deadline. Always. It's always kind of been my thing. Unless I really need to move early on a player because of price changes. I tend to leave it until then. It's just really the only time I can do it. So now that everyone is kind of doing their transfers at that time and the game is crashing, it's really stuffing me over. And not only that, it's the sort of thing where I then get influenced by what's going on on Twitter rather than going ahead with my plan regardless. You know, I've always checked in on Twitter that little bit before making my transfers, 20, 30 minutes to go. And unless there's anything major, I tend to just really ignore it. But now with all these leaks and stuff, it's really hard not to get influenced even when you don't want to be. And then before you know it, you've made up some transfers that you didn't want to do and you're panicking and you're like literally trying to get players out because you've heard they're not playing. And you're getting them in for good players like Salah, which I just, I never would have transferred him out this week. I mean, as you guys know, he was my captain <laughs> in my life video for this game week so I knew I'd done wrong as soon as I sold him it's just sheer panic 
but I couldn't see another way to get another City player in. It's an absolute mess. Didn't even consider Alvarez, to be honest. So now I'm sat here both happy that my transfers went through, but unhappy that I've sold Salah and, well, yeah, I, I'm gutted. There's no way around it. I'm gutted. It's a major point loss having gone from Salah to KDB for a hit. And now I don't have Salah for Southampton. The only guiding light I have is that we get a wild card after this and I can get him back. But it's not ideal, guys. I've lost a lot of ground because of it. Martinelli was quiet again. He's a bit hit and miss at the moment. I would love more consistency from him. Foden made way for Almiron. This probably should have been the only move I should have made if I wasn't going to punt on another City player like Alvarez. Miggy came in and I was a little worried that he couldn't score worldies every week. But apparently he doesn't just score worldies. Fair play to him. It was a great goal for eight points. He also had a little problem when coming off like Trippier. So hopefully he's going to be okay going forward. Up front, Halland came on to save my bacon as I couldn't change my captaincy. It would have been on KDB after making a switch had I known the switch had gone through. I ended up being left on Halland. I'll take the 10 points, but I feel both grateful and annoyed that I couldn't set KDB as my captain. Otherwise, the rest of my forward line for a second week in a row is an absolute mess. Look away now, yet again. Mitro didn't show up. Wilson decided to play just 45 minutes for one point. I have an absolute love-hate relationship with that guy and whether or not he ends up staying in my team this week will be quite interesting to see. All of that means I got 61 points, so 57 with the hit, giving me 916 points in total, placing me on a 10k-ish red arrow because everyone is so squidged up at the moment. That sees me at an OR of 46,659. Look, I'm feeling so knackered and done in by the last two game weeks with all of this stuff that's gone on. A game that should be fun. It really hasn't been very fun the last two game weeks in terms of this last minute panic stress and really that's been affected in my rank. So I'm really hoping that come the new year I can get back into my groove again and I can get back into my rhythm of doing me what I've done all season that has served me well because at the moment, I'm getting really concerned that these little things that might only be six points here, three points there, another couple of points there. For instance, my Saka move not going through last game week when I tried to. I've now missed out on two assists from him. And that is the difference between a red and green arrow at my rank. So yeah, it's little things like that that have just been really brutal and punishing. And I'm really, really hoping that we can get back to some normality and sensibility. And it's just that worry that these points here and there will just keep dropping me lower and lower and lower. So trying to get out that mindset and lift myself up. I could have done a bit better if I had Andreas first on the bench or if Wilson had decided to take a sick day off rather than trying to play 45 minutes for no reason but it is what it is I've rarely had an Andreas Hall off of the bench so I'm kind of used to it now. With that let's have a look at how I'm currently lining up for game week 16 before the World Cup and the worst thing about all this panicked madness with crashes and leaks is that I now no longer have any plan and I struggle with this actually as an FPL manager. One of the things that really helps me is having a plan because I'm dyslexic. So having a plan set out for me, even if I don't necessarily stick to it, really helps. So now with no plan, I'm struggling a little bit this game week, it has to be said. I have just one free transfer after making three last game week. So I'm in a bit of a pickle if any of the Newcastle trio or Mitrovic is out. My initial reaction is to get Salah back for Southampton, but I can't get him back easily. The only really easy way is to do KDB to Salah, and I'm not sure I really want to sell KDB ahead of Brentford at home. Despite having 5.2 million in the bank, it's a lot harder than it looks. Zaha is the easiest way to get back to Salah, but I can't do it in one move, and Zaha has Nottingham Forest. I can do Wilson and Andreas to Salah and Greenwood. 
and that would look like this but it is for a hit and you would expect Wilson to be fine this coming game week so this is a tough one I really didn't want to be taking a hit going into the break if we hear any negative news on Wilson or Mitro being out I may upgrade one of them to Darwin instead just to have some Liverpool attack if I don't buckle for Salah or I could even get Kane here if I wanted I have that much money in the bank the only other idea I have is Andreos to say a Saka, Madison, Kulusbetsky and playing five in midfield. I'll already have a bench headache between Gai and Constania, so if I'm forced to, I could always play both of those if we hear any negative news on my strikers. I don't really want to take a hit, as I just said, if I can help it, so I'm really hoping all illnesses and injuries will be okay and that I'll be able to take a one-week punt on someone I fancy before the World Cup. That's the hope anyway. I want some fun back. And if I can't plan, then I may as well take a bit of a punt. My need for Salah may become great and I may have to take a hit for him. And you know what? I don't mind doing that if I absolutely have to. I'm happy to take a one week punt on him. But I do have some other really good options this week. So let me know in the comments below what you guys would do in my situation. Either way, I can't go through the stretch of the last two game weeks deadlines again. It's just been too brutal for me. So I'm going to try and think about what I want my transfer to be before Saturday and maybe even try and pencil in some time to do it before Saturday. I'm not sure. I mean, a deadline should mean a deadline. We should be able to play the game up until the deadline. But let's wait and see what happens. Captain C will be on Halland, and if not, then maybe KDB. Or if I happen to end up caving and buying Salah and he comes back in, if for some reason Halland and KDB are iffy for some reason, then the captaincy would go on Salah. Moving on to the trending transfers. And surprisingly, Almiron is the most transferred in after scoring again on the weekend. Halland, I guess that'll be a lot of people getting him back in after the switch from selling him last game week. Trollard is still up there. Madison was our late show pick on Thursday evening with myself, Mira and Elizabeth Helenek and he's done brilliantly with two assists so he's looking good for another game week and of course Salah after that brace against Tottenham. Going out Foden and surprisingly with this Pep Roulette and his benching yeah you can see why everyone's getting rid of him especially at his price. Cancelo bit of a shock he will be playing as long as Pep decides to play him next game week as we say he's not banned for next game week so keep him if you have him. Mitrovic, obviously we had no idea of the injury so you can see why people are moving away from him. Jesus, brilliant player, doing fantastically for Arsenal but not necessarily being the best FPL asset at the moment so you can see why people are getting rid of him and people losing patience with Wilson already, all because he's ill basically. So that'll be interesting to see what news we get on him later in the week. And that's it for my team selection infam. Thanks for watching. I'll be back on Wednesday with a Q&A live stream with Holly Shand and also we'll be bringing you the FPL Late Show on Thursday evening. So please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and you won't miss out. It means a lot to me. Enjoy the World Cup. Have a lovely Christmas. But for now, please check out the sponsors of this video, Fancy Football Fix. Until next time, Nymphria out.